Hello everybody, hi Community Chapel. It is good to see you guys tonight. I'm glad to be here on the live stream with you for tonight's um, time together. So we're gonna start with prayer and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. God, we just thank you so much um, for all that you do, God, for who you are, for all your blessings, Lord. We just thank you for speaking to us, Lord. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you that we can grow closer to you each day um, by reading your word, by spending time with you, um, Lord, by fellowshipping with other believers, God. So we just pray tonight that as I speak, Lord, the words that you would um, have me to say, that I would say, God, that we would learn something, that we would hear something, that we would grow from this lesson, God, that you would just have your way in our hearts, Lord. Let us be receptive to the things that you want to say to us, um, let us be receptive to what you want us to know and how you want us to grow, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> like I said, I'm excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to get to share with you. Um, and tonight we're going to talk um, about waiting. So we're going to be in Genesis chapters 37 through 41. And we are going to be talking about the story of Joseph. And there's something about this story that I have always just loved. It's, um, it has its ups and downs for sure, um, but it really is kind of a picture of our lives. And we go through ups and we go through downs and highs and lows. And, and so something about the story of Joseph has just always really resonated with me. And it's, um, it's always been an encouragement to me. So I hope that um, you find this story encouraging as well. I'm not going to read the whole story word for word because um, it spans over several chapters in the Bible, but I would encourage you to um, read the story. It starts in Genesis 37 and goes, um, the part I'm talking about goes to 41, and um, it's just a good story. So I would encourage you to read that if you have uh, some time. But I'm going to just hit the, the main points of the story, um, and then we're going to talk about how we can apply this to our own lives. So, Joseph um, was the son of Jacob. He had lots of brothers, um, and Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, which that's kind of harsh. <laughs> um, Parents are supposed to say that they don't have a favorite, and um, that wasn't the case with Jacob. He made it very obvious that Joseph was his favorite. In fact, he made him a coat of many colors just to kind of show, like, you are, you are it. Like, you are my son, and this coat is for you to show that. Um, so naturally, because he was his dad's favorite, um, his brothers did not like him very much. In fact, they hated him. Um, they were jealous. They didn't like the attention that he got from his dad. They didn't like that he was the favorite. Um, so they didn't like him. And to make matters worse, um, when Joseph was 17 years old, he had a dream. And of course he had to share this dream with his brothers and his family, but um, his dream was that he and his brothers were all binding sheaves in the field and Joseph's sheep stood up tall, upright, and their sheaves all bowed to him. So when he told them this dream that he had, they just hated him more. They're like, oh wow, you think you're, you know, high and mighty, and you think you're better than us, and this just confirms that. Um, so then he has another dream. In this dream, the sun, the moon, and the stars were bowing to him. Um, so again, he told his family about his dream and his brothers hated him even more. So the fact that Jacob loved Joseph the most mixed with the fact that they thought Joseph thought he was better than them and that they were to bow to him. And so his brothers hated him. They did not like him. Um, they were jealous. So <clears throat> one day Jacob sends Joseph to go out to find his brothers um, they're taking care of the sheep or something like that. And so, um, Joseph goes out and finds them. And when they saw him coming, they start conspiring against him, talking to each other. And, 
and they're saying, oh, let's kill him, let's get rid of him, let's throw him in this pit. Like they hated his guts. Um, Reuben, however, did not want to kill him. So he convinced them, just throw him in a pit and he had planned to come back later and get him out of the pit and rescue him. Um, so they throw him in this pit, they don't kill him, but they throw him in this pit and after they throw him in this pit, they sit down to eat. And here comes a caravan of Ishmaelites. And so Judah brings up, well, like if we just leave Joseph here to rot in this pit, like, okay, but let's make some profit off of him. Like we might as well make some money off of him. So they decide together that they're gonna sell him to the Ishmaelites um, so that they could get some money. And it says they sold him for 20 shekels of silver. Um, I don't know exactly how much that is, but I looked it up and by looked it up, I mean Googled it a couple different places. So it's probably not the best information, but what I found was that was anywhere from like 200 to $400. Not sure if that's accurate, but if that is accurate, that's extremely sad that that's um, all their brother was worth. Um, I mean, you, obviously you shouldn't be selling a person in the first place, but um, that's how little they thought of him. That's um, that's how much they hated him, how much they despised him. They just wanted him gone, they wanted him out. They thought their lives would be better if he wasn't in it. So they sold him to the Ishmaelites. Um, then they take Joseph's robe, um, they dip it in blood, and they take it back to their dad, Jacob, and they tell him like, is this Joseph's robe? And immediately Jacob starts to mourn and weep. And he grieves Joseph um, for many days because by the looks of it, he's died. Um, his robe is covered in blood. He can assume that he's dead. So he grieves his son um, for many days. Meanwhile, Joseph gets sold to a man named Potiphar in Egypt. Um, and Potiphar is an officer of Pharaoh. He's the captain of the guard. And so Joseph is sold to his house. And over time, Joseph becomes successful in Potiphar's house. Um, he um, does everything that he can. He works hard. Um, and he becomes very successful. Um, he actually, Pot Potiphar makes Joseph the overseer of his house and basically puts him in charge of everything that he has. So quickly he earned favor with Potiphar and it even says like God's favor was on him and God's favor was with him. And everything that Joseph did was blessed by God. So he's in charge of Potiphar's house. So things are going good. Things are looking up. So we have this low point, he gets thrown in a pit and then sold by his brothers. And then we have this high point, like, oh, now I'm in charge of Potiphar's house, I'm in this position, um, God is blessing me, like God's favor is on me, and things are going great. Until Potiphar's wife comes along. And she had some bad intentions with him. <clears throat> she wanted to lie with him. And Joseph was a man of integrity, he wasn't gonna do that. And, you know, she, kept wanting him to, wanting him to, and he tells her no. That makes her upset and angry. And so as he's basically running off after telling her no, she grabs his like cloak or whatever, his, his top. And he goes away and she tells Potiphar that he did and that she was not willing and turns it completely around and lies and makes up a story and Potiphar believes his wife. So he throws Joseph in prison. And so we had this low getting thrown in the pit. We have this high of being put in charge of Potiphar's house. Then we have this low and now he's thrown in prison for something he didn't even do, for a crime he didn't commit. Um, so he's in prison and quickly in the prison, he starts to gain favor. Um, it seems like that's what Joseph does. Wherever he's put, 
he works hard, he does his best. So he gets in the prison, he starts to um, earn favor. Quickly, um, they put him in charge of the prisoners. Um, the keeper of the prison puts him in charge of these prisoners and God was with him. God was um, giving him favor. And so um, while he's in prison, and this is over a span of years. So, I mean, like I'm telling the story really quickly, but this is obviously like over a span of many years. Um, while he is in prison, there is a cup bearer and a baker that gets thrown in prison while he's in there. And Joseph was over them. And um, one night they both have dreams and they wake up and they're kind of upset and confused. And Joseph's like, hey, what's going on? And they tell him like, we both had dreams. Um, but there's nobody to interpret them. We don't know what they mean. And Joseph's like, well, you know, God is the one that interprets them. So like, let me know what it is and God will help me. So the cupbearer um, tells the dream. His dream was a good dream. It was a, a, a dream promising the cupbearer that he would be restored to his position where he was. And so the baker was like, oh, that's, that's a good, like, that's a good, um, you know, turn out from that dream. So the baker decides, well, I'm gonna tell him my dream too and see what it what he says. Well, the baker's dream um, wasn't so great. And the baker's dream, Joseph interpreted um, to be meaning that the baker was going to be hanged in three days. Um, but Joseph told the cupbearer, when you get restored to your position, please don't forget about me, please remember me. Um, and so, Turns out the cupbearer and the baker are called from their prison. Um, the cupbearer is restored to his position um, and the baker is hanged. And believe it or not, the cupbearer does not remember Joseph. He does not tell anyone about Joseph and his good deeds. Um, he just completely forgets about him and what he did. So Joseph was probably excited. Okay, the cupbearer is going, he's gonna tell them about me. Not so much, didn't happen. The cupbearer completely forgot. Um, so two years later, after this situation happens, Pharaoh has a dream and nobody can interpret it. And then finally, the cupbearer remembers, oh wait, there's a man named Joseph and he's in the prison and he had interpreted our dreams when we were in the prison. And so Pharaoh calls him out. And Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. And it was about famine coming and how to prepare for it and all this stuff. And Joseph tells Pharaoh, like, you need someone that's going to be in charge of this because this is coming and it needs to be taken care of. Um, and so Pharaoh decides to appoint um, Joseph as that person in charge. And he puts him in charge and he says, there is no one that is um, higher than you except for me. So basically Joseph now is second in command. Um, <clears throat> this happens when he is 30 years old. He gets put as second in command um, under Pharaoh. And we know what happens in the rest of the story. The famine comes, so people are coming from all around. His brothers end up coming and that whole story and that whole redemption process there takes place. But the point I wanted to make was Joseph had this dream um, when he was 17 years old. This dream that his brothers were going to bow down to, bow down to him. And he was probably kind of excited whenever he had this dream. He's like thinking this means something like I'm going to be in charge. I'm going to be, you know, um, held up high. Like I'm going to be in some area or position of respect. Um, he has another dream that means exactly the same thing. So he's probably excited and pumped and he's like, Hey God, like I can't wait to see this come to pass. Um, and then life happens, the ups and the downs. He gets thrown in the pit then he gets put in Potiphar's house. Then he gets thrown in prison, then he gets brought up. And this is over a series of many, many years. Um, it, he was 30 when he finally saw his dream that he had 
when he was 17 years old come to pass. He was 30. That's many years later. Um, that's 13 years later to be exact. 13 years of waiting, of waiting. Joseph knew that something was on the horizon for him. He knew that he was destined to do something great. And so I wonder how he felt when that wasn't happening. I wonder how he felt whenever his brothers threw him in the pit. He was probably thinking, how am I ever, I'm gonna die here. How am I ever gonna get to where I'm supposed to be? Then he goes to Potiphar's house and he's probably thinking, okay, this is it. Like I'm, I'm gaining favor. Like I'm, I'm climbing up in the ranks. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being seen as this person of, in this position of power and I'm, be, I'm being given these responsibilities. So he's probably thinking, okay, here it comes. Like, here's my time. He, I'm ready. And then he gets thrown in prison. He's not in prison for just a little while. He's in prison for a long time. And he's probably thinking, now what? How am I going to do what God has called me to do? To do what I foresaw in my dream? Like, how am I going to do that? I'm in prison. And then finally, it happens. But that was 17 years later. And I think it's funny because sometimes in our lives, God has promised us something, or he's told us something, or we're working towards something. We have a goal that we're working towards, or whatever it is, but we have these seasons of waiting, of, okay, like, any time now, God, you promised me this was going to happen, or God, you spoke to me, you put this into my spirit, um, and we wait, and we think, okay, like, any time now, um, and sometimes we think like a few days is a long time or a couple weeks is a long time or a couple years is a really long time to wait for a promise to come to pass. But here Joseph was 17 years of waiting. And the thing that impresses me the most about Joseph is that you never see him. If you read the stories, you never see him grumbling, complaining, pouting, being like, well, if you're going to throw me in prison, then I'm going to like wreak havoc in this prison. Or he never did that. He did the best with every single opportunity that he got. When he was in Potiphar's house, he immediately started doing the best he could. He worked hard. He had integrity. When he was in prison, in prison, he became an, I didn't even know that prisoners could be in charge of a prison. So like, he was a prisoner. He worked so hard. He was a man of integrity. He did what he was supposed to do. He did the best with what he had. And he got promoted in the prison. And so I think about our lives and I think about when we're in these waiting periods, what's our reaction? What do we do? Um, do we grumble? Do we complain? Do we doubt? Um, do we think that the end is all there is to it? Like, I think sometimes we get so goal oriented or we get so future oriented that we forget about the now. We forget about what we're supposed to be doing now during the waiting, the so-called waiting period for that to come to pass. And I think I believe the waiting time is almost just as important as the end result. The, the patience it takes, the faith that it takes, the hard work that it takes to wait, and the lessons that we can learn. You know, I think about Joseph, and if he hadn't had those things happen to him, would, would he have been as prepared for Pharaoh's task, for the leadership that he had under Pharaoh? Um, if he hadn't had that experience in Potiphar's house, um, would he have been prepared for this role? If he hadn't been put in charge of anything, if he hadn't been in the prison, um, learning what goes on in a prison and, and how to run a prison and things like that, would he be prepared for his role? I think sometimes we think of our waiting periods as just wasted time. Like, God, how much longer am I just gonna sit here and wait? How much longer do I have to do this? But 
like I said a minute ago, I think these times are almost just as important as the end result. What are you going to do with that time? You know, God sometimes makes us grow the most during these times because it, it is these times when we have to have patience. We have to have faith. We can't doubt what God promised to us or what God said. And so during these times, we want to make sure, like, am I doing my best with what I've been given now? Am I working my hardest? Am I giving it my all? Am I doing everything that I can to be the best that I can during this time? You know, maybe it's not the position that I want right now. Maybe I'm waiting on a different job or maybe I'm waiting on a different title or or whatever it might be. Maybe I feel like God has promised me that or God spoke to me that this is in my future. But now is my growing time. Now is my learning time. Now is my drawing closer to the Lord time. And I think it's so important that we use this time like we're supposed to, to grow, to learn, to pray, to draw closer to the Lord. Um, I think it is so easy for us to just look to the future and just be like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, you know. I don't know, it, it, it seems to me like sometimes we just let time pass because we're just waiting on something else. But what about the now? And that's my point to us tonight is let's not forget about how important the waiting period is. If God has promised you something or you feel something in your spirit or you know something is coming, um, let this waiting time be a time that grows you into the person that you're supposed to be. Let this waiting time be a time where you seek the Lord with all your heart in his word, where you encourage the people around you. Let this time be a time where you do the best with what you're given, whatever position you're in, whatever um, whatever it is that, that you're doing now, do it to the best of your ability. Um, because I guarantee you, God is going to use this waiting time for the future. Um, there's, there's like a quote, and I probably am not quoting it right, but it's, it's like, it's, remember, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And as kind of whatever as that is, like it's true. Yeah, the destination is where we want to go, but the journey is what makes us who we are along the way. And so we don't want to forget about that time. Um, just like Joseph made sure to continuously honor God during his waiting with his integrity, with his actions, with his work ethic, with everything that he did, he honored God during the waiting time. I want us to do the same thing. I don't want us to discount this time, this period, as just wasted time, as how many years am I going to have to wait for this, or how many weeks, or how many months, but think, how can I grow during this time? What can I do during this time that's going to make me who God wants me to be? Um, so if you feel like you're in a waiting period, um, whatever it is, don't set your sights just on the end goal. Um, don't get so focused on that that you lose sight of the now. And don't forget that God is with you in the waiting. He's with you in the waiting. Um, let him use that time to grow you, work in you, and prepare you for what it is he has for you. So that's my encouragement to us tonight. Don't forget, um, focus on him during the waiting. Let him grow you. And <clears throat> it's, it's encouraging to know that it's not just wasted time, that God can use that time to really grow us into who we're supposed to be. So let's pray. I hope that... Um, something about this message has touched your heart. I hope that um, the Holy Spirit has spoken to you tonight about your specific situation and how you can make sure to use your waiting period appropriately. Um, if you haven't read the story of Joseph, like I said, go to Genesis chapter 37 and start there. It's a really good story and I know that um, the Lord can use it to encourage you because it's a really cool story. So let's pray and um, let's thank the Lord for what he's spoken to us tonight. God, we just thank you so much for all that you've done. God, we thank you for 
your goodness. God, we thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Um, we thank you that we have the word, we have the Bible, that we can read those stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we can apply them to our lives, and we can learn lessons from these stories. God, I just pray that each person that's watching this now or that watches this later, God, would be encouraged that the waiting time is important and we can use this time to grow and be prepared and draw closer to you. God, I just pray that you would be with each and every person. God, just um, continue to grow us and draw us closer to you. And we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. And it was um, an honor to be here and we will see you next time.